uh, it is now time to launch into the sessions we've planned for you today. First up is Nature in Motion, a session that delves into the art and science of filmmaking on nature-based themes. To introduce this session and the speakers, I would like to welcome its moderator, Ms. Vidya Mani. Anyone who loves books and independent bookstores would probably have heard of Ms. Vidya. Co-founder of Funky Rainbow and managing editor of children's book review site, Good Books, that helped institute the Hindu Young World Good Books Award. A woman for all seasons and reasons when it comes to creative pursuits. We're delighted to have her as a core team member at Greenlit Fest. The floor is all yours, Ms. Vidya. Thank you so much, Pratyush. It's so lovely to be introduced by a young person. That's just the loveliest, uh, uh, you know, in, uh, interacting with young people makes us feel that there's hope for a better world. I would also like to invite my wonderful panelists, Priya Tuvasheri and Arjun Swaminathan. I'll introduce my wonderful guests here this morning, uh, Priya Tuvasheri, an independent document filmmaker and television producer. Priya's body of work has focused on women and gender, and her stories are windows into myriad experiences of the body, the environment, the community, mapped from uh, gender and feminist perspectives. Priya has been uh, directing, producing, and editing documentary films and television programs for New Delhi Television, Fox Traveler, CNA, National Human Rights Commission of India, Films Division of India, uh, Public uh, Service Broadcasting Trust, and Khabar Lehria uh, for over a decade now. Some of her well-known films include Khana Badosh, My Sacred Glass Bowl, Survey Number Zero, but she's here today to talk about her lovely film made in 2019, Coral Woman, and we'll hear from Priya about the film and the art and science of filmmaking in telling compelling stories. Uh, my second panelist, Arjun Swaminathan, he's a photographer and filmmaker working with indigenous and local communities to bring their stories and knowledge systems to a larger audience. The threads woven through interconnected systems that sustain our lives, and that's exactly what Professor Rangarajan was talking about earlier, uh, are breaking and leaving the world's uh, breaking, leaving the world's biodiversity at risk, and with it the very foundations of our economies, livelihoods, food security, health, and culture. Despite the impact of, that this loss has on human life, public awareness on the interconnectedness of the various aspects of our biodiversity is limited, and often our solutions seem to fall short. So, Somebody like Arjun works with civil society organizations in telling stories of the human resource, empathy, and documenting the work that has taken people years of hardship in order to achieve their purpose. And in this, he celebrates uh, human determination, getting just that one step closer to reduce the distress that we all feel about the state of environment today. Ar Arjun, too, has some wonderful uh, you know, films, two of which he's going to showcase uh, you know, here today, clips of them. Uh, or they are available online, isn't it, Arjun, for people to uh, use. Niru Ganti is one of them. And the song uh, of the camel, I mean, the camel breeder from Bikaner, which is a film that we're going to show you in uh, its entirety. On the art and science of filmmaking, I mean, you know, and uh, how this captures, uh, you know, uh, nature. And my first question to the two of you, really, is that, um, I mean, of course, I, I wanted to recall an anecdote, uh, you know, from, uh, from my younger days when, uh, you know, uh, watching David Attenborough. I mean, all of us, I'm sure, many, many of us have watched David Attenborough and his, uh, you know, wonderful videos and films on wildlife and nature from various exotic locales. I mean, you know, I remember seeing, um, uh, you know, a ring-tailed lemur from Madagascar when he was, uh, you know, showing us a film on that. And, you know, he was literally at, at the point that I was growing up, my single point access to some faraway nature. Now the thing is, we, I think today, need very, very powerful, uh, you know, storytellers who can mesmerize uh, you know, our younger generations and, you know, current people to imagine what a better future is going to be like, really. And the storytellers and filmmakers like you are doing, uh, you know, what it takes to bring nature, uh, you know, uh, closer to people, connecting them to people in some way. We're not, uh, you know, um, we can't have 
films that just showcase the beauty of nature and say, well, this is beautiful nature, now you do your bit to protect it. We've got to show people that human stories and the stories of the environment are just inextricably intertwined. So in that context, my first question to you is that um, there is just something about watching our environmental issues through the visual medium. When it's structured and shown with research, the impact can be really lasting. Would each of you like to introduce your films and your work in this context? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Green Literature Festival, for having me and Coral Woman at this venue. Uh, we had a uh, few screenings of Coral Woman in the past at Bangalore International Festival, BIC. Um, but uh, today, now speaking about the film and the process, uh, I think uh, it all starts with something which you, you fall in love with a story and you want to follow it. And then it leads to whatever it takes. For me, I didn't intend to make an environmental film or anything like that. I was very far away from all the space. I was more interested in gender space and stories around that. Uh, but uh, like the power of the medium, like you clearly said, uh, Uma Mani, the main protagonist of my film, uh, she fell in love with uh, corals when she happened to see a documentary at one of these screenings, like we are today. She was also at one venue. And uh, she started painting them. And somebody asked her, have you ever seen your muse, which is corals? And it just tracked her. She is this uh, very traditional homemaker from Tamil Nadu who, in her 50s. And uh, she started painting corals. And this question striked her. And she decided to learn swimming and diving at this age. And when I accidentally met her, or like actually a phone call, and I fell in love with her story. Uh, she was so inspiring that, you know, uh, deep, deep dives, diving is not like, you know, climbing, cycling or anything else. Uh, so it was our friendship that was the beginning. I fell in love with Uma and through her, her muse, which is the corals. And uh, in that friendship, definitely, I came to know about more about coral reefs, etc. And then the research part. Uh, the research led me to uh, Gulf of Manar, which is in the Tamil Nadu coast. Uh, and what I discovered was like, I thought that I was in a beautiful film, uh, in a journey of making a beautiful, happy film, because it's coral reefs, it's underwater. Yeah, wow, it's exciting. Though I didn't know anything about them at that point of time. Uh, but the research led to a lot of discovery in that coast and um, soon I discovered and understood that it's not going to be a happy film because what uh, in the film there is one line where Uma says it looks so blue and beautiful but when you go underwater then only you see what's actually happening there and for me the making of this film was exactly the same. I thought that I was making a happy beautiful film but what I witnessed was something else. I had one, uh, I remember once we had a screening and somebody asked me, did you put some effects on it because it looks so dirty underwater. I'm like, I didn't have to do anything because it is what it is. Um, so the discovery was something like that. And uh, then that led to that, you know, it can't stop here. What can we do? Uh, we wanted more people to see the film. The film started screening in Tamil Nadu itself because I wanted to know how much people know about their coast. And I was surprised that people didn't even know that a marine national park exists in their coast. Um, so it, I am one of those filmmakers who say that I make a film and I go on in making new films. But with this particular film, because of what we had witnessed as a team, we felt that there is an urge to have conversations around this. Uh, so we, we send the film to a maximum number of people, wherever people ask for screenings. Um, I was trying to do my bit as an artist because, like you said, that uh, I know the power of visual medium. I know that how much it can affect. Uh, in a closed space, when we see a film together, it leaves with you something. It meet, I'm not saying my film is a great one, but it, if it can have a conversation uh, saying that, oh, I didn't like it, but why didn't you like it? Let's have a conversation about it. It should spark something, right? Maybe not like when you leave that room, but maybe six months down the lane, you remember something uh, when you are in a beach and you are about to throw a plastic. Maybe it will strike you then. So, yeah, that is my intent when I get into film. Yeah, and the film is a 52 long film, 52 minutes long film. So we won't be able to see it, uh, show it here today, but it's easily available online. Just do a Google search. Uh, the film is there, and if, if it interests you, please go ahead and watch it. Thank you, thank you, Priya, and uh, thank you, everyone, being here. And one thing I have figured out as you know, working for so many years with 
you know, indigenous communities and, you know, people who are from local communities is that I make films on superheroes. Though, you know, it might not be the budget of a DC or a Marvel, but these are the superheroes that I make films on. And uh, when you look at them, one of, you're going to see two short films on these people. And it is these communities and these people, men and women, who are the preservers, who are the guardians. So there might be somebody who is a guardian of the galaxies. We don't have to go so far yet. <laughs> But right now we have somebody who is a guardian of a lake, who is a preserver of camels. As you know, two stories that you're going to see, and it it this you know exploring these stories came over time, and it was I was you know photographing and I was making films with you know communities, and then realized that there are these little little stories of their knowledge that we don't get to hear outside. And most of the news that we hear on many websites or you know or uh, or newspapers is that it's all gloom and doom. It's not the case. Yes, we are in bad times, but there is a lot of hope out there, and it all depends on us, right? So once we reconnect with our surroundings, that's when we start understanding what you know, tree does, what these insects do, right, what these animals do. So that disconnect is what has brought us to where we are today. And that is what, you know, I want us to learn from these indigenous communities, that the connect that they have with their surroundings. So when, when we are talking about shepherds, when we are talking about you know, these doctors, Adivasi doctors in the forest, and, you know, they leave their jobs and come to the cities. It is not just, you know, this idea of a livelihood or, you know, or a climate refugee that we are looking at. It is a collapse of a knowledge system. So if a person living in the forest moves to, let's say, from Jharkhand, moves to Rorkela or Calcutta or Bhuneshwar, wherever, yes, he or she has gone to look for a job, but the knowledge of the forest collapses. So once that happens, it becomes easy for people to encroach. So that is something we have to start working towards to, you know, to get ourselves reconnected with, you know, what we have around us. So that is something that I have learned. So it is for me, when I go out there and shoot, there is a certain idea that I have and I want to tell this story. So once I go out there, yes, I am following it, that story, but it's a, with a completely open mind. You never know what can happen. Mm -hmm. There might be something that just pops up and it could just take the story in a completely different direction. But it just, and it's a learning process. Every single time you go out there, you're learning something from these people. And the other thing when we have to, you know, when I say reconnect, it is these conversations that we have at home, when we have children around, and we have these little conversations, what does, does, you know, does that tree do? What does, you know, the role of an ant or, you know, role of a mouse, whatever it could be. So those little conversations start making people aware of oneself and the children. So it's more or less, when I go out there, one is telling the story, and number two, it's an exploration for myself. I want you to dive and see this beautiful underwater. There's a big corals full of fishes. They were all swimming around me, colorful fishes. I never had an idea as to I'd be diving in my lifetime, no, not even swimming. 
somebody saw this painting and told me, have you taken a closer look at the coral? So I thought it's high time. I dived and found these corals with myself. Looks so blue and beautiful outside. Go underwater, it is like a desert. 2016, we lost about 16.2 percentage of corals in Gulf of Mannar. I don't know how long it will take for Gulf of Mannar to recover back. Uh, if uh, there is another bleaching, we will lose more. Belly naar gelle erontela muttu angre kinge varvang. Engta, engta, daddy kalat. Ana patedi, anchedi, naaledi wayerontela pavala par kundo. Ippo ande chupiel ille ande baare gelle ille. Ebrya alinge puch. Ini ingge uti ronda, pala itu niya. Kua kadal la kulis tu ti tadi tu, ada ingge portamna. Adu orang umur tu dua sengkaliyo. Pepsi Posse is the Kapapaika salvarasi. Uh, that is an exotic species. Uh, it was introduced in Gulf of Manar uh, as a part of a livelihood program. This is the Kapapaika uh, covered coral colony. So within 30-40 uh, days, the entire colony is uh, now dead. Police have had to open fire in Toti Koral in Tamil Nadu. This, even as thousands of residents were protesting against the sterilized copper plant. Urla oral karandal karandal marda arndichi. Ipa apni gade adu. Or terula naaliyar muniyar gur. Climate change. It's not what we can control locally. It needs global attention and global initiatives. Whatever uh, the mistakes the whole world is doing, we are facing the consequences. दादी जी चारी मोर पर दादी जी चारी मोर पिता जी चारी हमें भी चारों मोर लारे है जी का एक चारे टाबिया दूधरी हमारे नस्ल दो आर उठ दिया एक घने ले रहे हैं बार में नस्ल गया पहला सवा साल पहला उठ लाया हूँ टम फल महागे उठ कोई उठ रही है वो ढाई सौ तीन सौ मार आज उठें यों ये वैसा ये वैसा छोटा छोटा टोडिया मार पाज ये वैसा ये वैसा ये सही हिंदू बिकने नशली सही दूध देने सही ऊन ही और खोड़ी हुए कतरने बदुड़ी हुए जेठ में जो माथे ऊन को नीति तीक बल्ला रूह हुए बिकने की जेरी ऊन कठई को बल्ले इंडिया में फिर जाए इतनी तो खोड़ी इतनी कतरने वो ही फायदू ही फायदू है पशु पालन में परार आइए परार मिलन में हो शो सब पशु पालन के अन मौरा परार सब राजी हों सुनिए जगह ये 
फोनो में अखबार आया जो बचे जो कहीं के सब के रजी really the fate of nature and the well-being of people are no longer separate issues their stories are inextricably linked and as film filmmakers with a focus on the environment and the interconnectedness of all biodiversity what stories do you choose to tell why do you choose to tell the stories that you do um like i said sometimes uh, some it could be a news piece it could be a story which you hear it could be a person you meet and uh, you just question why and then you go behind it and like uh, he had clearly said sometimes it's just discovery on the way like uh, for example in the film you will see a sequence of uh, locals uh, who were protesting while we were shooting it was the the fa infamous terlite uh, firing which happened in tamil nadu the locals were protesting against a company which was there and uh, little did uh, national media i am i'm based in delhi uh, i and i am speaking of national media little was covered at that point of time and when we were shooting it was uh, i witnessed a bunch of people who were protesting for almost 100 days it was exactly like 5 6 days before the firing i met them and i was surprised that people were wearing t-shirts and easter light and all that was happening out there and little did we know sitting in delhi what is happening in a co in that coast and when we started speaking to the locals and they were talking about cancer being there in every second house and how it is really increasing when compared to the last few years um and uh, i remember in the film you will see a sequence where it is a murky underwater coral reefs and uh, you, i layered it as a filmmaker i layered the sound of the protests which are happening the firing which is happening because for a second when i was going through the material i was thinking what if one time those corals had a voice what does it sound like and my i still remember my sound designer was are you really sure you want to have this i'm like yeah i want to i want to leave that impression uh and so that kind of experiences happen and sometimes we also witness stories like in the same film i'm giving more examples of from the film because it's focused on that um there is one sequence uh, where we talked about the local community who is into an algae cultivation and uh, in the conversation they were telling me it is called pepsi pashi and uh, they so i was shooting the sequence because it it was very nice that a local community uh, women were free diving and they were going underwater and we had this beautiful sequence of uma and uh, the community women a uh, fishing community and uh, when they said this word it stayed with me so i went back to the researchers and asked like what is this pepsi pashi so they told me it's actually an algae which was introduced into the sea because uh, definitely the climate change impact is there the fishing have reduced and alternatives so they introduced this philippine based algae into that and it was actually you know, instead of doing good it was actually smothering the corals and uh, it was discovered very late and by then it was introduced and once you introduce something to the ocean there is no go back right So yeah sometimes these kind of stories and experiences comes out and it as an artist it becomes like a thing though I and went ventured into this film because I wanted to make a film about Uma and I soon realized this film is not just going to be her about her but also about the corals and what is happening to them uh, many filmmakers advise me you know why don't you make it just about Uma it's it would go to festivals and blah 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 but um the experience once you go through it then it becomes what you are as a person then what you then that dis uh, decides what kind of story you want to share yeah so coral bleaching is basically a stress response that the animal shows to a rise in temperature and what's happening is this global climate change phenomena together with local stressors is what is really pushing coral reefs off their rails right now
these squirrels have escaped yes. the bleaching event. Uh, until this area, it yes, died. Right. Now, it, it this area survived and it is growing. Corals will be white only they are alive. After that, like three you know, months, yeah. it will it will be occupied yeah. by algae. It will wither. And there was a baby this uh, branching corals, yeah, 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 that was which there. survived, and it looks so beautiful with all that. You see, yeah. there are a lot of fish. If there is no coral, you won't see the, these fishes. They are dead. It's like uh, people without houses. Birds without trees. In India, we have uh, four major coral reef areas. One is uh, Lakshadweep, one is Andamans, and we have two major reef areas in uh, the mainland India. Gulf of Munnar is one of them. I mean, you have about 117 species of corals here. People from abroad, when come to Gulf of Munnar, yeah, they haven't seen uh, this reef anywhere in the world. And it provides livelihood to thousands of people. Two thousand four tsunami. Nobody, nobody would have forgotten that. There was impact until Rameshwaram in the north and from Tiruchendur in the south. The area between Tuticorin and uh, Rameshwaram escaped because of the because coral. of the corals. So you, you can see the dead reef here. Yes. It used to be live, it used to be colourful, it used to be full of fish. Now it's like, you know, yeah. it's like a barren land now. 2016, we lost about 16.2 percentage of corals in Gulf of Munnar. It was actually during the third global coral bleaching. It happened between 2014 and 2017. All over the world, corals were damaged. Uh, starting from the Great Barrier Reef to the Caribbean. All the three ocean basins, Pacific, Indian and Atlantic. I don't know how long it will take for Gulf of Manar to recover back. Because uh, it is, you know, uh, if uh, there is another bleaching, we will lose more. Parana <laughs> Mutunagar, <laughs> I <laughs> Especially in this 
part of uh, Tamil Nadu. They will say no fish, no fish, no fish. We used to get a lot of fish 20 years back. Because you used to have a lot of corals. You used to have a lot of sea grasses. You destructed everything along with the industries, I mean, domestic uh, waste, coral mining. You've done the damage. Yes. Now you are uh, facing the consequences. And Now if you want uh, the fish to come again, you have to let the corals recover. You have to help them. Otherwise, you know, your children will not be able to see corals. They, will, they can just see them in, on photos. So this was basically about why do you choose to tell the stories that you tell about oh. the interconnectedness of uh, all nature and biodiversity. Again, like I you know, mentioned earlier, it, it is an exploration. So I like exploring. There is, you know, listening to stories, right? So it is whatever the stories, what I mean, I started listening to story and my, my love for stories came, you know, through my grandfather. So as a kid, my grandfather used to narrate stories to me and, you know, I would listen to these and it was just fascinating to see how all of these stories had some kind of a connect there. And as you know, I got into this profession of uh, making films and telling stories. You understood that something happening in Jharkhand is connected somewhere in Gujarat, right? From the, and from there it is connected somewhere here in Karnataka. You never know. And that exploration of connecting those dots is what was fascinating for me. And another thing was all of these folk and mythological stories that we listened to, are actually in a way connected to our lives, right? So when we talk about, let us say, mythology, it could have been somebody's memories centuries ago, and it has turned into mythology today. You don't know, right? So that exploration that this is not it, there could be something more than that. You go start digging deeper. That is the fun part of, you know, exploration and finding, finding that story. We all know that the belief today is that if we can't imagine a world in which nature and people thrive together, we certainly won't be able to create it. What are your thoughts? I mean, both your films are about preserving, uh, you know, uh, nature. And uh, why don't you, uh, you know, in very, you know, briefly tell our audience about your thoughts as filmmakers on, on this? There's no question we can't thrive at all. <laughs> Where will artists like us also go? Yeah. yeah. Um, but jokes apart, um, uh, it like that's why I think we we continue this journey uh, because we felt we we witnessed something and uh, what we showcase through our work is something we wanted to take it to masses. Um, and we are not trying to give them lessons through my I, and my films through my work. I never intend to do that, but I really wish to have conversations around that. Uh, so with uh, Coral Woman to take this conversation forward, uh, you can see a book version of the film uh, outside. Uh, because I, when I made the film, I never thought that uh, it will connect so much with children. Uh, but uh, we had an exclusive screening in Mumbai where 300, 400 children came and I sat with them and saw the film and it was so interesting to see how they responded to the film. And uh, that made me feel that there should be a children's version. And so to make a film for children was like more expensive and I got a partner on board who uh, supported us. Lubaina Bandukwala wrote the book and it's beautifully illustrated. You can watch it outside. And uh, then we also experienced in this journey with Coral Woman, I also happened to meet a lot of marine researchers and activists and conservationists. I don't see myself as an environmentalist yet. Uh, but uh, I felt that there is lots of ac uh, action happening and if we can join together, that collaboration can do a lot of magic. Uh, in, in that process, we did an art residency uh, where we co-created like uh, artists, uh, researchers and conservationists come, came together, diverse, and we created an art residency and installed an, an, a, a sculpture underwater and did uh, coral restoration work on it. That means we built a coral nursery on that sculpture. It is in Goa. Uh, so how can we multiply the conversations around it? It is very important and um, as an artist, I thought that how can I do, what can I contribute uh, to this thing and uh, yeah, a few things are happening that way. I'll be interested uh, if anybody 
is interested to know more, more about any of this, I'll be around, so uh, well, we can have a conversation about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what about you, Arjun? In 2013, I traveled to Chelakere in Chitradurga district. And it was around that time the, the science city was getting built. And there was about 12,000 acres of grasslands that was given to uh, the pastoralists around that area during the Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan time. So of that, 9,000 acres was taken away by the government, you know, to build uh, I, IASC and, you know, DRDO installations and all of that. So it's a large science project that was, and uh, defense project that was getting built. So while we were, you know, uh, traveling that region and making photographs and, you know, short videos of it. So you began to realize that once this 9,000 acres is gone, there are a lot of people who live off it, by it. That's it. You know, they will be in the cities. You know, in some, you know, project, you know, and driving a car or, uh, you know, as a cab or as a working as a security guard and stuff like that. So why, and, and there are these little cottage industries where they would make blankets, right, of the Deccani sheep wool. So those blankets were actually used by the army in the Himalayan region. It was that warm. So that was again a dying uh, livelihood for them. So as people who live in the urban sphere, if we start to understand that there are these livelihoods outside as well, and how is it that we can be a part of it and support it? It's very easy to walk into a mall and go get into H&M and pick up tons of clothing because they are cheap, and then you come back, and six months later, you're going to buy it again. So I think it is that consumption habit of ours, if we break that down and start looking into these alternate, you know, sources of uh, clothing or, you know, whatever home re household requirements are there, then I think it is, it is sustainable in the longer run. This, what we are picking up right now as a consumption pattern is not sustainable. And a lot of people say there is, you know, there is uh, the climate change happening. It's because of these large uh, global companies and they are the ones who are doing it. But they are doing it because we are aiding it. Yeah. Right? If Shell is being a part of disaster, it is because I am filling Shell fuel. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's about it. So, so, yeah, once we start to understand our consumption pattern, that's when we kind of know that how it is going to affect the other side. So we can't be in a bubble. That is something that we need to, you know, realize. Manuvarla unde te manuvarla unde te ma gudam ma talli ke jai mangala de mangala ramaso mangala so mangala manuvarla unde te manuvarla unde te ma gudam ma talli ke jai mangala de mangala ramaso mangala so mangala manuvarla unde te manuvarla unde te andreya swami ke jai mangala de mangala ramaso mangala
ಕೆರೆ ಅಂದರೆ ನಮ್ಮ ತಾಯಿಗೂ ಇನ್ನ ಜಾಸ್ತಿ ಪ್ರೀತಿ ನಮಗೆ ಚಿಕ್ಕಂದಿಂದನೂ ಈ ಕೆರೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಮೀನು ಹಿಡೋತಾಯಿಂದ ಹಿಡಿದು ಈಜು ಕಲಿಯೋತಾಯಿಂದ ಹಿಡಿದು ನಮಗೆ ಜೀವನ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರೋ ಅಂಥ ಕೆರೆ ಇದು ನಮ್ಗೆ ಅನ್ನ ದೊರೆಸ್ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರೋಂಥ ಕೆರೆ ಇದು ನಾವು ದನ ತಿರುವಿನಿಂದ ಬಂದಿರೋದು ಸಾವಿರದ ಆರುನೂರು ಆವಾಗ ಈ ನಾಲ್ಕನೇ ನರಸಿಂಹನಾಯ್ಕರ ಅಂತ ಪಾಳೆಗಾರ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಗುಮ್ಮನಾಯ್ಕನ ಪಾಳ್ಯದ ರಾಜಬಾರ ಅವರ ಆಡಳಿತದಲ್ಲಿ ಈ ಕೆರೆ ಕಟ್ಟಿಸಿದ್ರಂತೆ ಇದು ಕಾಲುವೆ ಹೆಂಗೆ ತೆಗಿಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗಿರಲಿಲ್ಲ ಪಾಳೆಗಾರಿ ಆವಾಗ ಈ ನಮ್ಮ ಪೂರ್ವಿಕರು ಬಂದಿರ್ತಾರಲ್ಲ ಅವರು ರೆಡ್ಡಿ ಅವರು ನೇಗಿಲು ಕಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಎತ್ತುಗಳಿಗೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿಂದ ಆಯ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಬಣ ಕೆರೆ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ತನಕ ಕಾಲುವೆ ತೋಡಿ ಅಂತ ಇದಕ್ಕೋಸ್ಕರ ಆವಾಗ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಇಬ್ಬರು ಮಕ್ಕಳಾಗಿರ್ತ ನಮ್ಮ ಪೂರ್ವಿಕರಿಗೆ ಒಬ್ಬರಿಗೆ ತಲಾರ್ತನ ಒಬ್ಬರಿಗೆ ನೀರ್ಗಂಟಿ ಅಂತ ಎರಡು ಪೋರ್ಟ್ ಪಾಲ್ಯ ಕೊಟ್ಟಿರ್ತಾರೆ ಆ ನೀರ್ಗಂಟಿ ಇದೇನು ಕೆಲಸ ಅಂದರೆ ಕೆರೆ ತುಂಬಿದ್ರೆ ನೀರು ಹೆಂಗೆ ಬಿಡಬೇಕು ಬೆಳಗ್ಗೆ ಬರ್ತಾನೆ ಎಂಟು ಗಂಟೆಗೆ ತೂಬೆತ್ತಾನೆ ಯಾವ ಕಡೆ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ತಗ್ಗು ಪ್ರದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ದಿನ ಪ್ರದೇಶಕ್ಕೆ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಅಂತ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಇದು ಇದು ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ನೀರು ಬಿಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಇರ್ತಾನೆ ಮತ್ತು ಅವರಿಗೆ ಈ ಒಂದು ಕೆರೆಯ ಬಗ್ಗೆ ಅಪಾರವಾದ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಎಲ್ಲಿ ಮಳೆ ಬಂದರೆ ನೀ ನೀರೆಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಬರ್ತದೆ ಮತ್ತು ಅದು ಸಿಲ್ಟಪ್ ಆಗದೆ ಆಗಲಿ ಅದರ ಅದರ ಉಪಯೋಗವನ್ನಾಗಲಿ ಅದನ್ನು ಆ ಸ್ಲೂಯಿಸ್ ಗೇಟ್ನ ಆಪ್ರೇಟ್ ಮಾಡೋವಂಥದ್ದಾಗಲಿ ಎಲ್ಲವೂ ಕೂಡ ನೀರು ಗಂಟೆಗಳು ನಡೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತಾಯಿದ್ರು ನೀರ್ಗಂಟಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದೊಂದು ಪದ್ಧತಿ ಇಲ್ಲ ಅಂತಂದರೆ ಯಾವನಿಗೆ ಹೆಂಗೆ ಇಷ್ಟ ಬೇಕೋ ಹಂಗೆ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊತಾನೆ ವ್ಯವಸಾಯ ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ಮಾತು ನಡೆಯೋನು ಇರ್ತಾನೆ ಮಾತು ನಡೀದೇ ಇರೋನು ಇರ್ತಾನೆ ಅದೇ ನೀರ್ಗಟ್ಟಿ ಇದ್ದರೆ ಅವನ ಜಮೀನಲ್ಲೂ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಳೀತಾನೆ ಇವನ ಜಮೀನಲ್ಲೂ ಬೆಳೆ ಬೆಳೀತೆ ಈ ಥರ ಒಂದು ಅನುಕೂಲ ಆಗುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಒಂದು ಸಾವಿರದ ಆರುನೂರ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ಕೆರೆಗಳು ಈ ಜಿಲ್ಲಾ ಬನ್ನ ಈ ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರ ವ್ಯಾಪ್ತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಸಣ್ಣ ಮತ್ತು ದೊಡ್ಡ ಕೆರೆಗಳು ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತದೆ ಈ ಎಲ್ಲ ಕೆರೆಗಳು ಕೂಡ ಮಳೆ ನೀರಾವರಿ ಆಶ್ರಿತವಾದಂತಹ ಕೆರೆಗಳು ಸ್ವಲ್ಪ ವ್ಯತ್ಯಾಸ ಆದರೂ ಕೂಡ ಅಂದರೆ ಒಂದು ಟೆನ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಮಳೆಯಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಡೆಫಿಸಿಟ್ ಆದರೂ ಕೂಡ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಬರಗಾಲ ಪೀಡಿತವಾಗಿ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಆವಾಗ ನೀರ್ಗಟ್ಟಿನ ಎಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ ಕ ಯಾವ ಜಮೀನಿಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ನೀರು ಹೋಗಬೇಕು ಎಷ್ಟು ಉಳಿತಾಯ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಕಾಲಕರೆ ಆಗಿದ್ದರೆ ಯಾವ ಬ ಯಾವ ಬೆಲೆ ಇಡಬೇಕು ತೀರ್ಮಾನ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದೆ ನೀರ್ಗಟ್ಟಿ ಬೇರೆ ನೀವು ಬೇರೆ ಬೆಲೆ ಬಿಟ್ಟರೆ ನಾನು ನೀರು ಬಿಡೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನಿಮಗೂ ಬೆಲೆನೂ ಕೈಗೆ ಬರೋದಿಲ್ಲ ನನಗೂ ಊಟಕ್ಕೆ ನೀವು ಕೊಡೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಇಪ್ಪತ್ತೈದು ಎಕರೆಗೆ ಪಲ್ಸಲ್ಲಿ ತಗೊಂಡು ಇನ್ನೂ ಉಳಿತಾಯ ಮಾಡ್ತಾಯಿದ್ದ ನೀರು ಆ ಉಳಿತಾಯಿದ್ದ ನೀರು ಕುರಿ ಮೇಕೆ ದನ ಕರು ಎಮ್ಮೆ ಹೆಸುಗಳಿಗೆ ಕುಡಿಯೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಕಾಗ್ತಾಯಿತ್ತು ಹಿಂಗೆ ಆ ನೀರ್ಗಟ್ಟಿ ಕಂಟ್ರೋಲ್ ತಪ್ಪಿದರೆ ಯಾವ ಕೆರೆನೂ ಉಳಿತಾಯ ಆಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ಯಾವ ರೈತರಿಗೂ ಬೆಲೆನೂ ಸಿಗೋದಿಲ್ಲ ದೇವ ಅವರನ್ನ ರೈತರನ್ನೆಲ್ಲನೂ ಮೇಲ್ಗಡೆ ಇರೋ ದೇವರೊಬ್ಬನೇ ಕಾಪಾಡಬೇಕು ಬಟ್ ಅವ್ರು ಇವಾಗ ಅದು ಯಾವಾಗ ಸೀಸ್ ಆಯಿತೋ ಬೇರೆ ಬೇರೆದ ಮೇಲೆ ಡಿಪೆಂಡ್ ಆಗಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಹಾಗಾಗಿ ಏನೋ ನನ್ನ ಕೆರೆ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಇಂಟ್ರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಟ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋಗಿ ನೋಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತಾರಷ್ಟೆ ಅದು ನಮಗೆ ರೈತರಿಗೆ ಯಾರು ನಮ್ಮ ಬರಗನಹಳ್ಳಿಯಿಂದ ಇವಾಗ ಯಾರು ಹೋಗಿ ಮಾಡ್ತಾನೇ ಇಲ್ಲ ಕೆರೆ ಅನ್ನೋದನ್ನೇ ಮರ್ತು ಬಿಟ್ಟಿದ್ದಾರೆ ಎಲ್ಲ ಡಿಪೋ ಅಂದ ಕೊಡೋ ಅಕ್ಕಿ ತರೋದು ತಿನ್ನೋದು ಈ ಥರ ಆಗಿಬಿಟ್ಟಿದೆ
ಸಮುದಾಯ ಓನ್ ಅಪ್ ಮಾಡದೆ ಯಾವುದೇ ಆಸ್ತಿಯನ್ನು ರಕ್ಷಣೆ ಮಾಡೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸರ್ಕಾರದ ಕೈಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅನ್ನೋದು ನನ್ನ ಕೂಡ ಭಾವನೆ ಸೊ ಅದು ಸಮುದಾಯವೇ ಎಲ್ಲವನ್ನು ವಹಿಸ್ಕೋಬೇಕು ಅವರಿಗೆ ಫೆಸಿಲಿಟೇಟರ್ ಆಗಿ ಕಾ ಸರ್ಕಾರ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಮುಂದಿನ ಪೀಳಿಗೆಗೆ ತಗೊಂಡೋಗ್ಬೇಕು ಸ್ಮಾರ್ಟ್ ಫೋನ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಅವ್ರ ಹತ್ರ ಇರುತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಸ್ಕೀಮ್ಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲ ಗೊತ್ತಾಗುತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ನನ್ನ ಕೆರೆಯನ್ನು ಯಾವ ಥರ ಅಭಿವೃದ್ಧಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಬೇಕು ಏನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಅನ್ನೋ ಆಸಕ್ತಿ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅವ್ರಿಗೆ ಏನಂದರೆ ಗೌರವಧನ ಥರ ಕೊಟ್ಟು ಆಸಕ್ತಿ ಹುಟ್ಟಿಸಿದ್ರೆ ಮುಂದಿನ ಪೀಳಿಗೆಗೆ ತುಂಬ ಟ್ಯಾಲೆಂಟ್ ಇದೆ ಆ ಟ್ಯಾಲೆಂಟ್ ಯೂಸ್ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಇನ್ನೂ ಕೆರೆನ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಊರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ರೈತನ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಇನ್ನೂ ಇಂಪ್ರೂವ್ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಇನ್ನೂ ಚೆನ್ನಾಗಿ ಆಗ್ಬೋದು ಅಂತ ನನ್ನ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ಸರ್ಕಾರೇತರ ಸಂಸ್ಥೆಗಳು ಎನ್ ಜಿ ಓಗಳಿದೆ ಅದು ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಒಂದು ಕೆಪಾಸಿಟಿ ಬಿಲ್ಡಿಂಗನ್ನು ಗ್ರಾಮಾಂತರ ಪ್ರದೇಶದಲ್ಲಿ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಯಾಕೆಂದರೆ ಒಂದು ಬಿಹೇವಿಯರಲ್ ಚೇಂಜ್ ಅಂತ ಏನು ಕರಿತೇವೆ ಜನರ ಮನಸ್ಸಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಂಥ ಬದಲಾವಣೆಯನ್ನು ನಾವು ತರಬೇಕು ಒಂದು ಗ್ರಾಮದಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಯಾವುದೇ ಕೆರೆ ಇದ್ದರೆ ಅದು ನಮ್ಮ ಗ್ರಾಮದ ಆಸ್ತಿ ಎನ್ನುವಂಥ ರೀತಿಯಲ್ಲಿ ಅವರು ಕಾಪಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಬರುವ ಹಾಗೆ ನಾವು ಆ ಕೆ ಕೆರೆಗಳನ್ನು ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಸೊ ಈ ರೀತಿ ನಾವು ನಡೆಸ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬಂದರೆ ಮಾತ್ರ ಈ ಕೆರೆಗಳು ಮುಂದಕ್ಕೆ ಇನ್ನೂ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನದಾಗಿ ಬಾಳಕ್ಕೆ ಬರೋದಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯ ಆಗ್ತದೆ ಅಂತ ನನ್ನ ಅನಿಸಿಕೆ ಊರಿನಲ್ಲಿ ಒಂದು ಕಮಿಟಿ ಮಾಡಿದ್ದೀವಿ ಆ ಊರಿನ ಸುತ್ತಮುತ್ತಲಿನ ಏನು ಗೋಮಾಳ ಏನಿದೆ ಆ ಆಸ್ತಿಗಳನ್ನು ಕಾಪಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಬರಲು ಒಂದು ಸಮಿತಿ ರಚನೆ ಮಾಡಿಕೊಂಡು ಆ ಸಮಿತಿ ಮುಖಾಂತರ ನಾವು ರಚನೆ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಬರ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ಒಬ್ಬನು ಯಾವುದೇ ಕೆಲಸ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕೆ ಸಾಧ್ಯವಿಲ್ಲ ಆ ಊರಿನ ಜಲ ಎಲ್ಲನೂ ಕೂಡಿ ಮಾಡೋದರಿಂದಾನೇ ಆ ಊರು ಅಭಿವೃದ್ಧಿ ಆಗೋಕ್ಕೆ ಅವಕಾಶ ಇದೆ ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಹೊರತು ಒಬ್ಬನು ಏನೂ ಮಾಡೋಕ್ಕಾಗಲ್ಲ ನೀರು ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಬೇಕ್ತಾನೆ ನಾವು ನೀರು ಬಂತಾಗ ಎಲ್ಲರೂ ಉಪಯೋಗಿಸ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋದಕ್ಕೆ ನೀರು ದೇವ್ರ ಅನುಗ್ರಹ ಮಾಡಿರೋದು ಕೆರೆ ಅಂದರೆ ಒಬ್ಬರಿಗಿದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರದ್ದೇನಪ್ಪ ನೀರು ಅಂದ್ರೆ ಅವ್ರು ಕೆರೆ ಕೆಲಗ ರೈತರೆಲ್ಲ ಇದ್ದಾರಲ್ಲ ಊರಿನವರು ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಸೇರಿರೋದೆ ಹಕ್ಕು ನೀರು ನೀರು ಊರಿನವ್ರಿಗೆಲ್ಲ ಸೇರುತ್ತೆ ನೀರು ಬಿಡೋ ವಿಚಾರ ಮಾತ್ರ ನಮ್ಮೊಬ್ಬರಿಗೆ ಸೇರಿದ್ದು ಅದು ಹೇಳ್ತೀವಿ Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Priya and Arjun. I'm sorry because of all the tech glitches. We don't have time for audience questions, but Priya and Arjun will be there for some time outside. And like Priya said, uh, the book, A Coral Woman, is available at the Funky Rainbow pop-up outside. You know, what was really lovely on the conversation, and even though it had its tech glitches, is the fact that you know um filmmaking uh, you know the films that both of you have made it really shows us i mean lay people on the outside that the frontier of conservation actually is right here it is at the boundary of science and art and i think it's that combination which is probably going to take us forward and tell stories that are really compelling and powerful thank you so much for joining us today Thanks it's been such you. a pleasure Thank you.